Today I'm going to show you guys how to get the most out of your DI resin. Hey guys, Devin with ReefDews, and today we're in my furnace room where I have my RODI system and I want to give you guys a few kind of tips to show you how to get the most out of your DI resin and how to prolong its life. It can be one of the more costly things if you have high TDS going through it, it'll burn through your resin pretty quickly. A few simple tricks that we can do to give it a long, happy life. So the easiest way to monitor the performance of your RODI system is to look at the TDS. Now for that, the easiest way to do it for me, I find, is having inline TDS meters. I have one that monitors the source water going into the unit, uh, one after it goes through all the filters coming out of the membranes. Uh, the next one's going to monitor after the first DI, and then after the second DI. So, um, so this kind of works as like a backup if one's a little bit higher, then the next one will for sure finish it off. So it gives you a little more buffer room if you run out. Now when I first turn this on, the key to saving your DI is having multiple flush valves. Now if you guys haven't do it, the two different types of flush valves, the first one will flush your membrane. Uh, it's very easy to make a DIY flush kit. I have a Y that goes off the waistline. So one that just basically bypasses and lets the water rush through. So instead of it going through the restrictor, you're bypassing it and it's getting any extra TDS out of the membrane. Now the second one, which actually is the magic of saving the DI, is this valve right here. And what I do is I teed it off right before it goes to the DI so that I can flush it and let the system run until the TDS creep goes down without touching the DI. So I'll just give you guys a bit of an example. Let's just turn this on. Um, so if I just turn on a quick flush. So usually I'll turn it on, I'll flush it for about 30 seconds or so. This gets rid of any of the little particles and junk that is built up within the membranes. And then the next valve, this one, I turn it on and it's gonna let, let the system run and it's gonna flush to a drain. Now it's winter time. So it's just going down the drain. If it was summertime, I'd probably do it to the yard or garden or somewhere else like that. So looking at this now, we have 65 TDS. So if we were running straight to our DI, this is what we call TDS creep. So as it sits, it will build up. Now it's 43, 40. So if I turn this on normally, we would have 60, 50, 30 TDS going through that DI. And that's one thing that really burns it out quickly. Now I find if you leave your system running for about a minute or so, it will go down to two or three TDS. So this act of flushing it prior to DI is basically rinsing out all of your TDS creep. So we got 11, 10. So it's almost all the way down. It's been probably what, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Okay, so we got four TDS. So if we leave it for you know another 30 seconds or so, it should go down to one or two. Now, if we look at our source water, we have 68, 69 coming in. And now there's three coming out. So that's doing pretty good now for the membrane. Now this one won't show a number yet because we don't have water running through it. So I'm gonna turn off the yellow flush valve. I'll turn on the black one, which fills my root container. All right, so now it's showing one TDS coming out of the DDI. Um, that could mean it's starting to get exhausted, but one TDS I don't really worry about. If I see it climb to two or so, then anything higher than one, then I'll take a look at it. Uh, the other thing to pay attention to is if you have a flow gauge, once the gauge, if it's in the green area, the 40 to 80 PSI, you're doing pretty good. If you look at it and you have very low flow, um, you're not going to be getting quite the performance out of your system. And it could also indicate too if something's maybe getting clogged, you got to replace your pre-filters. Uh, another question I get asked a lot is how often should you replace your filters? Um, as a general rule, every six months I replace the sediment filter, and every second sediment filter will replace the carbon block. Sometimes I'll replace them both at once, but that's kind of a good general rule. So I found a kit on Amazon for about 10 bucks that had all the parts, all the different T's, the Y splitters, the valves, everything. So super cheap to do, and it will save the life of your DI. And it will help if you do the flush kit as well off the membranes. That's again going to help prolong the life of your filters and save you money in the long run. So as always, I'll throw some links in the description below. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button. And as always, make sure you guys subscribe and hit that bell to keep up to date with more great videos on reaping.